after you just had that kind of like a knockout win uh, a couple of weeks ago. What was the preparation preparation like? What was the message from the coach? Yeah, I mean, this week definitely a little bit of a different circumstance. You know, uh, they're playing with house money. It's winner go home for, for them. And, um, you know, we knew they were going to come out, you know, fighting aggressive for a lot of those guys that have been around. Um, you know, we knew that this could potentially be, you know, their last game. And we knew, um, you know, some of their players are going to be a little more aggressive and, and try and get theirs and win some more matchups this week. Um, but yeah, I mean, credit to them. That, that just shows that the leadership they have and uh, for them to come out and fight and, and not lay an egg or, or lay down to us. Uh, really impressive, but I don't expect anything less because you know this is the rivalry, greatest rivalry in the sport. So uh, kudos to them. Over here. Uh, yeah, we saw a little altercation there at the end where their emotions kind of, I guess, uh, ramped up a bit. Uh, how much of that, you know, just it being a rivalry, being an elimination game, how much of that is going on throughout the entirety of the game? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we got to do a little bit of a better job there, keeping our heads and. Um, you know, we, we kind of knew that at that point in the game, we, we were playing Saturday and the game was kind of out of reach. Uh, so I, I was just trying to get in there and, and get our guys away and, and break it up a little bit. But uh, that's the rivalry. You know, every, every time we play, the emotions are going to be high. Uh, you know, there's no love lost between us and them. And uh, that's how it will always be. That's what makes this rivalry so special. And um, but, but yeah, that's, that's you know, anytime you see that, you see that Yankees, Red Sox, Michigan, Ohio State football, and uh, same thing kind of here. But yeah, we, we could have done a little bit of a better job there, I think. Wayne. Yeah, I got to get to Logan before the coach takes over. You had a goalie's dream. You had a clean interception on an interior pass, and you took off with that. Uh, how well were you seeing the ball tonight, and uh, and how um, much did you feel involved in the offense? We saw you bring the ball upfield several times today. Um, I think I overdid a little bit running up the ball up the field sometimes. I think uh, kind of just had to stick to our clear a little bit. Kind of got dicey there a couple times. But um, in terms of the pickoff, you know, I heard – there was an attackman coming up. I heard him call the guy's name, and he threw in. I don't know. I just made the play. Um. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dog. Got myself uh, distracted there a little bit. Uh, you guys had obviously been in a rhythm playing once every six or seven days pretty consistently all season. Was it a little different just sort of trying to find that rhythm again today after after having a little bit of a light off here? Um, I think we just we had to um, stay true to ourselves. Um, when we had some time off, you know, we still compete during practice and everything. Uh, we push each other. Um, on and off the field, um, in the weight room, academics, all that good stuff. So um, I think just maintaining our um, same mindset kind of helped us, and we have great leadership that helped us um, um, kind of push through that time off and get a win today. Yeah. John, just offensively, you, you guys had a handful of goals that just were through contact and still well plays, really, really hard shots. Just how valuable is that for your offense when you're not getting like clean open looks to, to still bury it? Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't get those, you know, your hands free, you know, in room and time. So um, I thought we, we did a good job with guys hanging on us, being able to navigate that and put them to good spots for sure. Okay, Coach, uh, early in the game, 21 shots, only four goals. Obviously, they were, were, were they rushing it? And then the last 21 shots, you got 12 goals, which was back to turf lacrosse. What happened early? Is that why you nailed a couple timeouts? Um, I think we we had some looks. I think some of our guys would like to have back, um, you know, where we got to good spots. And then I think there we settled um, on offense for some shots that, especially against a guy like Kirsten, I think Kirsten does a great job of, he's a big goalie. And if you get to low angles, he comes out so far. And I thought we took some of those early where, I mean, the odds are really against you if you settle for that. So, um, you know, I think we did a better job as the game went on of, of kind of foregoing some of those and then trying to get a little bit more towards the middle of the field. And when we did, I thought we had more success for sure. Yeah, uh, this is for Coach Ryder Logan. Uh, uh, after the last 
week, you guys kept the Falcons pretty pretty tied up on with all with their offensive side. Was there anything that they got you read you differently that I know they got a couple of those goals, but you guys not like not sure anything else? Was there any different look that they gave you this week? Uh, I would say they were definitely a little more aggressive in their one-on-one -on -one dodges, uh, but we kind of expected that. I mean, you look at their game last week against Penn State, they did a much better job of, you know, getting shorties on favorable matchups and uh, drawing slides and moving it or, or just winning one-on-one -on -match, one -on -one matchup and getting to the goal. Uh, so, yeah, they were definitely more aggressive, but like I said before, when, you know, it's do-or-die scenario like this, you can expect their, you know, their best players to try and make some plays. And, uh, for them, you know, they did tonight. They did a good job in, in the middle of the field and earning some kind of transition opportunities like that. Uh, but a lot for us to clean up and a lot to learn from. Hey Josh and Ed Wayne. Uh, Coach, uh, following the, the, the scrimmage near the end of the game and, you know, the flip side against this online, uh, what, was, what was the message? Uh, just be smart, you know, like let's make sure. We wanted to kind of get a sense of what is the situation, right? Get organized and, and make sure the guys going out knew. It was a very unique situation where it was a four on four, right? And then it was going to release into a six on five. Um, and we practice a lot of situations. We did not practice this that situation this year. Um, I'm not sure any program does, but just be smart. I, I thought their kid did a great job. There was a little contact in the middle. Um, guys pushing, shoving, which happens all game. And I thought their guy did a terrific job. He kind of pushed our guy, and our guy pushed him back, and he definitely like just embellished it. Smart play. Why? You're down late. Why not see if you can get one? And our guy fell for it. I thought it was super smart. And if I'm them, like, listen, that gives you a chance to maybe get back and maybe get some opportunities. So, um, again, a great teachable moment for us. We just need to be sharper and smarter in some of those situations. Um, and we'll watch it. We'll show it. And, again, these are all things that happen on the journey. Um, and, again, they're not fatal, um, but they could be. So we just need to be smarter and more mature, you know, in those spots. And then after that happens, we need to be that, do a better job collectively. So again, we'll make sure we, we address it because if you don't, it can come back and bite you in the butt, especially this time of year. Uh, it's finally tournament time. You've got a short turnaround. How do you guys handle that? How many times do you get to practice and how do you get ready for Saturday night? Um, you know, the good news for us is having that last 10 days, you know, we were able to, you know, kind of get a little bit of a mental break, but also, you know, kind of knowing that, all right, we just played Hopkins. And then with a week in between, we were able to kind of practice things and scenarios and situations, but we also were able to kind of slide in some things that Rutgers does, some things that Ohio State does. Um, and, and then we could finally figure out who we're playing and then we still had five days to prep for a team we had just played two weeks. So um, having that extra week allowed us to, to kind of not only think ahead a little bit, but there's a lot of commonalities to all four teams that are here. I mean, you're going to see a lot of big little. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of early offense. So there's a lot of different carryover. We didn't necessarily get into the specifics of personnel, but we did look at some of just the, the different things that they did, um, some of the schemes and, and some of those things. You know, like with Hopkins, it's more when they go from defense to offense, they're going to come, they're going to set picks early, um, and your offensive guys have to navigate it. For Rutgers, it would be more, okay, they're going to dodge your guys. you got to get back and defend that way. Um, Ohio State's a little bit more like Hopkins. So there's a good amount of carryover to all the teams that we're playing. So we knew um, we'd have a short turnaround, but – we were kind of lucky. I think the last three teams in the league that we played are the three teams here. So sometimes it works out that way, sometimes it doesn't. So do you guys get to stay and watch the game, or are you right into prep? Uh, we'll, coaches will watch for sure. The guys have uh, the option of, you know, if they want to go see their families, they can do that. Um, they can stay and watch the game. That was one of the reasons I was checking to see where we could go. Um, that's where Josh kind of lost me, or at least maybe I lost him. Um, <laughs> And so a couple guys asked if they could watch. So they'll have the option of doing that. We'll, we'll obviously watch this game. Um, we'll get break it down. And then tomorrow we'll start talking about whoever wins the game and what we want to do, how we want to do it, and um, kind of utilize the next 48 hours. Um, it's nice having the first game because I, I do think it's, it's pretty helpful to be able to get it, that rest early, hit the ice baths, hydrate, um, and then for us, just start looking ahead. Josh, let's close it out with Emmett. Uh, for Brett or Logan, um, you know, Ajax got an assist today as first period point. Um, you know, Brett, you scored uh, against Virginia. Matt Rangel scored against Virginia. Logan, you scored last year. Um, just how cool is that to see, you know, him as a sophomore? I'm sure you guys have been important mentoring him 
uh, just to see him, you know, get that milestone and, you know, turn defense into offense and show his athleticism. Yeah, I mean, he should done a great job for us all year. I kind of gave him a little grief uh, on his penalty there because Logan threw a nice outlet to me. I thought we were out. I was trying to run the Calvary, maybe throw it down the side, get Roman on a trail. But, uh, yeah, Ajax has been awesome, and uh, that's what we expect from him. You know, I, I just continuously tell him to be himself because he does all the right things, and uh, he's a turp. So, uh, not surprised, and uh, he's starting to play his best lacrosse now, which is going to be huge for us down the stretch. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. We'll have John Hawkins in here.